Hello and welcome back to Eastlands.com. My name is Stephen Boylan and I am delighted to welcome uh, Fanon Kearney, whose debut novel, You, Me and Other People, has just been published by HarperCollins. Fanon, thank you very much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Um, obviously, this is your debut novel. Can you give, give us a little bit of information on how you've got to this point, what your journey as a writer has been like? Oh, journey as a writer, I'm not keen on that word, journey, but it is exactly that. It is yeah. a journey. There's a starting point and I hope I haven't reached my finish point yet. <laughs> <laughs> but journey as a writer, I always wanted to write, always. It's a, something innate, you know, that you can't escape once it's once it's actually there inside you. I've had a career doing something completely different, mm -hmm. um, working in London on property, and all the time I'm in the background scribbling, you know, writing short stories, dreaming. And then about seven years ago, I had an opportunity to stop working, and uh, my husband said, right, it's time, time to really, really try. And it has taken that long. It's taken three novels before this one. Wow. Um, lots of rejection en route, uh, you know, developing that, uh, that hard shell that, you know, you don't mind getting a few knockbacks. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am a lesson in perseverance and persistence. And if you keep going, and, you know, if you really want to write, you can't stop writing. Yeah. So I kept going. And during writing, you and other people, I felt, I felt a bit like, you know, when you meet the right one, this is the one. Mm -hmm. And I knew something was different, and I attracted an agent really quickly. And um, Harper Collins quite quickly thereafter. So and that's the journey so far. And now that you're published, does it yeah. feel exactly the way you thought it was going to, or is it kind oh, of it very feels, different? It feels so much better. I mean, there's there's no there's no there's no explaining how wonderful it is when something that you really really wanted to do, and you get that phone call to say that you've got book deal. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's a joyous thing really, so I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying every minute and I've tried to savour every minute because, for instance, this is, you know, it's the first time I'm going to do a blog interview and I'm trying mm -hmm. to savour every first time Absolutely. because, you know, it, it, you know, life is for living. So. Yeah. In those seven years where you were, you were working on other stuff and then you were working on this book, can you give me some sort of sense of what like, your writing day is like? So yeah. uh, how, how, how your process worked and how, and how that got underway? I think before I was contracted, I wrote very much like I still write, in that I tried very hard to treat it like a job. And, you know, treat it like get up in the morning, okay, I'm going to work. All right, sometimes it was in my pyjamas, I admit that. <laughs> but I did put the hours in, is what I'm mm -hmm. saying. So I would go to work, only cross the landing, turn on the PC, and think, right, what am I doing today? Am I editing what I've already done? Am I writing new chapters? Am I doing some planning? Am I whatever? And I would literally then, as well as now, put in a good morning's work, take a break, usually have a walk or something just to clear the head mm -hmm. in the middle of the day. And then the same in the afternoon. So it really is nine to five for me. I try really hard not to work at the weekends. Okay. But to be honest, your head is always going anyway. So the life of a writer, you know, my husband says to me, Are you on the phone again? I said, I'm working. <laughs> I'm working. It's kind of job that you can still work out even when you're away from the desk. Exactly, exactly. Because you're always thinking and you're earwigging on conversations and, you know, just, just being an observer, really. Um, so the result is You, Me, and Other People, yes. as I say, just published by HarperCollins. Um, tell us a little about the book. Okay, You Mean Other People is, it tells the story of Adam and Beth who are on the outside a very successful couple, of successful marriage and you learn very quickly in the book that actually all is not as it seems and the marriage is actually disintegrating and again you learn very quickly that Adam is the wrongdoer and when writing it I felt it was really important because I'm telling a story which I guess has been told before you know about marriage breakdown and how it affects you know, how it affects with the ripple effects through through the family and, and dynamic of the couple. But I wanted really to show that there are two people in this disintegration, not just the not just the person who has been wronged, but also the wrongdoer. So it tells the story very much from Adam and Beth's head. There is mm -hmm. a point of view from both of them. And I think that's probably what makes it different. You know, you hear why he does what he does, yeah. how and what has led him there. And it's very much about what makes us who we are, you know, if we do ever keep secrets or tell lies, can there be a reason for doing it? Yeah. Is there ever a good reason to tell a lie? Mm -hmm. if, if the truth's going to hurt someone, is that worse than when they find out? Mm -hmm. So, wow. okay. yeah. Fascinating. Um, and is there any authors that um, you would read that would act as your inspiration? 
I love authors. My current loves are Jojo Moyes. Um, David Nichols is one of my favourites. One Day is, is, is yeah. that book that I wish I'd written. Yeah. I, I read it most recently. His yeah. things are absolutely fantastic. I, I, I'm, I'm writing at the moment, so actually I try not to read in genre when mm -hmm. I'm writing because very often the voices can slip through. So, for instance, if I picked up David Nichols' book now, yeah. I'd be afraid that my male character would start talking like his male character. You know? So I try to avoid reading very similar genre fiction mm -hmm. when I'm writing first draft. Yeah. But I have us on my bedside table, waiting, very waiting, good. waiting. What is your favourite book of all time? Oh, God. Um, uh, this is going to be completely sort of offside. It's not in genre, but I, I would probably say The Book Thief, okay. which is actually a crossover. It started as a young adult book and crossed over to sort of adult fiction. Mm -hmm. And I just was fascinated. I don't know if you've read it, but... Yeah. Um, the very fact that death is the narrator in it, and you see the unveiling of World War Two and the harrowing scenes through a child's, you know, twelve eyes. It's 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 a fascinating book. Yeah. That and One Day, completely different. Yeah. But they would be my two faves. The interesting about the book thief is that people say, you know, it's a, it's a crossover book. It's for adults and kids. But when you think about it as a kids book, you think a death narrator. It's kind of yeah, a strange concept. Yeah, it for is. A kids book. It is a strange concept. But I think it worked as a young adult book. But yeah. it worked pro possibly even better as an adult book. Right. So, right. Yeah. Um, and in relation to what you're going to read next, what's on your bedside table? Us. 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 And uh, I have our book club book, which is oh God. I'm Oh, it's a, it, it, strangely enough, it's a young adult one again, and it's, oh my goodness, I'm going to be reading really Bowers next, I can't remember the name of it. We Were Liars. Oh, very good. We oh, Were Lockhart. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, very that's good. So I've got that to read next. That. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah. as I say, Fiona, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, you, Me and Other People is available uh, on all Easton stores and also available on Easton's.com. See you again soon.